Hi, this is Jay Lee. Hope all is well. People have been asking me what kind of cameras do I use in order to capture these uh, atmospheric anomalies. So for this last UFO sighting event, I was able to capture an observational orb. This orb stuck around for about 20 to 30 minutes and I was able to capture it on all three of my cameras, my V520, my P900, and my A6000. Just want to let you know that we had a great time together. We always have fun uh, looking for UFOs. If you've never seen a UFO, you really got to come over to one of our events uh, and be able to videotape these things and see them with your own eyes. I wanted to thank Foster Perez for hosting this event and Robert Bingham for being our special guest. Both did a fantastic job and thank you John Graff for providing such wonderful pictures. So with this first shot, it was captured by the Panasonic V520. This is my most versatile camera. It's also a great starter camera. It provides 80 times zoom. Once you open up the monitor, it's ready to go. I love it for capturing the quick stuff. There's uh, orbs that shoot across the sky and this is the best camera to capture it with. Unfortunately, for some reason, they're not selling this anymore. You can't find this anywhere except for on eBay and usually it's used. It's really a great camera, but I kind of beat up on mine. That's why uh, it has some sort of a green tinge to it. With this camera, it almost seems like it accentuates the internal illuminosity of this object. This next footage comes from my Nikon P900. This is another fantastic camera, 83 times zoom with high resolution. Now this is a great camera, but I find it a little difficult to capture stuff with it. I'm a little spoiled with the V520, but if you can capture something with this, it's fantastic. There's no doubt this is a great product. I think the only other thing that I don't like about it is the fact that it won't go live. Uh, the camera reads only off of the card. So if you wanted to do like a live broadcast, you can't use this camera. By the way, I think this orb is a little bit more than a mile away. I think that this footage actually accentuates the fact that this thing is super round. It's pearl shaped and not oblong like a regular latex balloon. There's no tether tie. There's no drip point. Uh, this is just a perfectly round object. This next footage comes from my A6000 hooked up to my Mead ETX90 telescope. And it's kind of an unfair comparison to the other cameras because it's hooked up to the telescope. The thing is that when I hook it up to this telescope, I can squeeze out about 156 times zoom. This camera has incredible resolution. And the other thing I really like about it is the fact that I can actually go live with it. I can actually um, go on Facebook or YouTube and hook this up. Uh, and go live. It's just a fantastic camera. We usually hold these events at a park, so every once in a while we end up getting stray balloons being released, which by the way is environmentally irresponsible. I videotape them anyway because I like to do comparisons. And now I want you to see the difference between what a observational orb looks like compared to regular balloons. To me, this should be obvious. We have some of the best UFO communicators in the world at our events. There's nothing magical about what we see. It comes down to understanding. So this type of stuff really doesn't surprise me. When you go to the pier with a fishing pole, fishing line, hooks and bait, should it surprise you that you catch a fish? Not me. When we capture something like this, is it a million to one chance? We just happen to be in the right place at the right time? We set a date, time, and place, and this shows up for 20 to 30 minutes. What are the chances? The only Occam's razor explanation for this is that if we launch these things ourselves, and of course that would never happen, it is not in a million years. We have way too much respect for ufology to release balloons and make them out to be orbs. But even if we did, how did we make it stay in one position for 20 to 30 minutes? We've got 20 eyewitnesses. What direction would we have to release it from for it to appear one mile over our heads? Like I said, we'd never do that. We have zero respect for those who fake UFOs. What you are looking at is the real deal. This is either mechanical or biological. When we see a flyby or orbs like this, we can't ignore it. This is something that has to be explored, so I invite you to explore with us. Please join LA UFO channel on meetup.com and help us explore the skies. What we are doing is the cutting edge of ufology. So we hope to see you at our next event.